Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog, and today we're going to learn some technical basics about volume and loudness. And we're also going to learn how you can compare your track to a reference track without always getting jealous of how loud that reference track sounds. So first just two minutes of some technical basics, then a quick practical application, and that's going to be it for today. Let's get into it. Before we go any further, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and maybe sign up for one of our classes on underdog.brussels, or sign up for a one-on-one -on -one coaching with me in the link below. So first we need to understand three terms, peak volume, RMS volume, and dynamic range. Imagine you're making a track and it looks like this. The absolute loudest volume that it ever gets, we call that peak loudness, peak volume, and it's measured in decibels. And it's represented here with this green line. That's the volume that's usually going to show up on most meters that are reading the volume of this signal. However, it's actually a pretty bad indicator of how loud we think a sound sounds, subjectively speaking. There's a second volume measurement that you need to know, and that's called RMS, which stands for the words root mean square, but you can just forget about that. And actually, it's sort of a nerdy way of saying it's the average volume of the signal over, let's say, about the last half a second or so. So in this diagram, we can add a blue line here, which represents more or less the average volume of the signal, the RMS. It's always going to be lower than the peak volume, and it's going to be somewhere between the loudest part of your signal and the quietest part of your signal. The distance between the loudest part of your signal and the quietest part of your signal is also referred to as the dynamic range of your signal. So in this first example, we could say that this sound has a large dynamic range. It's a very dynamic signal or a very uncompressed signal. Now here's a little secret about how our brains actually work. Our brains are hardwired to always think that louder sounds better, subjectively better, and particularly louder in terms of RMS. Not so much in terms of peak, but in terms of RMS. Now this is a tested principle. So what you do is you take two identical sounds, like bit for bit identical sounds, make one of them a decibel or two louder, play them in front of an audience and ask them which of the sounds they prefer. They will always choose the louder sound, but then you ask them why they prefer that sound and they'll make up some, some reason. They'll trick themselves into thinking that the louder sound is warmer, that it's more punchy, that it's more analog, that it's crisper, that it's brighter, that it's any of these kind of really subjective words, just ways to justify it being louder. So let's consider a second example. Here's another song that peaks at the same volume as the previous song. However, when this signal reaches its most quiet part, it's not as quiet as the first song. So the distance between the loudest and the quietest parts is much shorter. It has a smaller dynamic range, it's less dynamic, it's more compressed, and it's RMS is higher than the first track's RMS was. This is closer to what a professionally mastered track probably looks like. So the first track will look a bit more like your work in progress, and the second track will look more like a professionally released track that's probably a bit more compressed than yours. So imagine you want to compare your track to a reference track in your DAW. You put your tracks in there, you set them to the same volume, and then you A-B test. You switch from your track to the reference track. And every time that that happens, you end up coming away frustrated because the reference track always sounds punchier, more warm, more bright, more crisp, more smooth, more round, any of these words, right? But actually what's happening is that its RMS is higher than your RMS. And because its RMS is higher, we automatically think it's better. Now you understand the bias of your own brain, we can fix this. To make your track and the reference track equally loud, subjectively speaking, we just have to match their RMS to the same level. So the safest and simplest way to match your RMS to the RMS of the reference track is to take the reference track and turn it down until its RMS is pretty much pulsating at the same level as your track. That way, when you go over and back from your track to the reference track, you're not gonna be fooled by its loudness. You're gonna have the same loudness and then you can make decisions based on the balance of the elements. Does your song have the right elements in the right proportions compared to the reference track? Things like this. Decisions like this are now within your control and you're not just there chasing subjective loudness. In a later video, we'll discuss different strategies of compressing your own dynamic range to get it to be in the ballpark of what your reference tracks could be so that you can sit 
inside the dynamic range appropriate for your genre, but that's a completely different subject and that's not what I want to address today. If you understand the difference between peak and RMS now conceptually, you've also seen this in Ableton Live. In Session View, if you go look at the meters, there's two different types of volumes being represented there. There is the transparent green, which is peak volume, and then there's the darker green, which sits there below, and that's the RMS. So if you want to compare your tracks to a reference track, just bring down the volume of the reference track until you see the full green bars jumping next to each other. From that point onwards, you know that all your mix decisions are about balance, not about loudness. Understanding this concept as early as possible in your music production career is going to save you so much time and frustration. You're going to learn so much faster. So just get this tool in your belt. Check out some of our other videos. Sign up for one of our classes. Be good to one another and stay producing. Take care. Bye bye.